Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overtow, overflow, the overtow, the undertow, whatever, the over thing, the, <clears throat> the overflow room. That's where we are, overflowing with music. And we're finally, finally at the end of Ravel, our 16th video from the overflow room in my overflowing Ravel. Now, that doesn't mean I have more Ravel than anyone else, because some videos I do like bigger stacks. But, you know, Ravel was a composer who wrote a limited number of exquisitely crafted works that were highly, highly polished, each given, you know, great refinement. And so I figured, what the heck? I would take my time getting through Ravel. And it's been a lot of Ravel. Really, a hell of a lot of Ravel, hasn't it? So here is the last Ravel clump. Dun, ba, da, da. Let's see what's in it. Oh my goodness, what a clump. André Cluitaz, his mono and some stereo things. On Testament, Bizet, Le Jolie Fille de Perte, Sweet. Ravel, Alborada, Daftus and Chloe, Sweets 1 and 2. These are from 1954. These are monos. Uh, the Minuet Antique and Unbarque sur le Ocean with the Orchestre National de la Radio Diffusion Française which was later, these were later replaced by the wonderful stereo remakes he did with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra. So, you know, but it's still nice to have these. And Roussel, Le Festin d'Araigné, The Spider's Feast from 1965, way at the end of his career with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra. Wonderful. This is the Fragment Symphonique. It's not the complete ballet. It's the bits. But, you know, now, of course, there's that huge, those, that huge Cluitin's box that has all of his stereo and mono stuff in it. And so, you know, this is a little bit redundant, but that hadn't come out when these did, so I had them first. That's why they were relegated to the overflow room. What is this? This is Royal Long Players. This was some sort of licensed EMI thing. Um, and they, they came out with twofers. And the reason I got the twofers is because there was some some really nifty stuff in here that you couldn't find anywhere else. Um, it was on, I don't know what, what, this stuff doesn't exist anyway, but uh, let's see, it was Disky Communications and it was licensed from EMI, which is now Warner. And I kept them because it was, you know, well, we have, let's see, the Cuitas Bolero. Um, then we have uh, Tsigana with Christian Ferris and Pierre Barb is a piano. I mean, Sigan is horrible, but, you know, it's Christian Ferris, was good to hear. A Jido with Georges Sifra, Georgi Sifra. Uh, the Pavan with Samson Francois. Gaspard de la Nuit, just Scarbo with Samson Francois. That was one of his, like, specialties. That was amazing. Um, Laval's with Martinon. And Alborada with Lauren Mazel with the New Philharmonia. That is strange concatenation of things. That's why I had this. Then we've got Daphnis and Chloe complete with Raphael Frubeck de Borgos and the Philharmonia. It's a very good Daphnis. I had no idea he even did Daphnis when I got this back in well, the dawn of time. This was issued in, what, 2001, it looks like. And the Rhapsody Espanol with the Philadelphia and Muti, which is just slamming. Fabulous. So, I mean, it's, it's really quite an interesting Ravel collection that you will never find ever again anywhere. That's for damn sure. Up, oh, this is the Charles Munch 1962 Daftus, the newer one, the second one, the better one, of which I had many copies. This is Japanese RCA, Munch edition. Um, again, it had no hope of seeing it otherwise. Of course, it was stuffed into the Munch box. But the Daftus that always got plugged was the earlier one, the 55 one, which didn't sound as good. And I don't think it was quite as good a performance. I think this, the Boston Symphony had gotten much better by 62. And uh, this is the one to get. You also have here the Piano Concerto in G Major with, uh, who's singing Nicole, yeah, Nicole Henriot Schweitzer, piano. So that's fun. Good stuff. Let me see, I always put these backwards so that I get the, the English lettering on the spine. And what's this? Oh, look, Daphnis and Chloe with Munch. This is the earlier one, the 55, of which I just spoke. And it's newly remastered SACD incarnation. Uh, Daphnis and Chloe with Manuel Rosenthal. Uh, I think I'm going to have more Manuel Rosenthal at the bottom here. But you know, I keep talking about these, that they really ought to be gathered together and reissued because this was on ADES at the time, but it's actually owned by Polygram. 
And uh, Polygram are universal. It used to be Polygram. Now it's universal. I mean, you know, first there was this, then there was that, right? I mean, they keep changing names and affiliations and, and, and conglomerations. and But all this Rosenthal stuff is great. I mean, he was there when all this stuff was premiered. He lived to be like 100. Uh, he was a, an extraordinary conductor. He composed Gaete Parisienne. I, you know, he's just one of those authentic French guys. And, and his performances of Debussy and Ravel and just about everything else are wonderful. And they deserve to be preserved and reissued. Um, it says, let's see, ce disque compact est tiré de l'enregistrement de l'œuvre symphonique intégrale de Maurice Ravel paru en 1959. Um, uh, what's, what's that? Uh, um, let's see, 1959, how do you say that? 1959 dans la collection Pro Présence de la musique contemporaine. Created by Lucien Ades. Got it? You should have the Rosenthal stuff if you can find it. I mean, I'm, I'm asking Cyrus to reissue it. We'll see where we get with it, you know? Then we've got, oh, look, Martinal, his Daphnis and Chloe, and the Vols Noble, which is in the box that we've talked about in various of these videos. That's just the single one. And here's a single Alcerme, Daphnis and Chloe. I guess this must be like the Daphnis and Chloe section of my Overflow Ravel, or some of it anyway. Um, so here's the Anserme, along with Alborada del Gracioso and Lavals, which is quite wonderful. Um, fine performances. Everybody seemed to be really at the top of their game when they did Ravel, probably because he was, first of all, such a fabulous orchestrator, and he made sure that everything sounded well, but also it's fun to play. It's really a good time, you know, because everyone knows that they're going to be challenged and they're, they're on their tippy toes when they do it. Ah, this is fabulous. Oh, don't tell me I have another one of those. No, it's not. Okay. The complete Azawa Ravel Boston Orchestral Works, first class. This always got trashed, always, because, because Azawa wasn't munch. And because Azawa wasn't some French person, but his Ravel is as great as anybody out, anybody's out there. It's better than Munch's for the most part. Everything except for the Daphnis, although this is just as good as Munch. I mean, it's all wonderful. It's gorgeous. It's fabulously played. It's wonderfully sonorously recorded. Um, it's a great, great three disc set. And I have preserved it forever. Of course, now it's all been reissued in the Azawa box, but, or various Azawa boxes, but, um, where where are those? Those are all out of print now, of course. So yeah, got to keep the stuff. Boulez, Mother Goose, Un Bark, Alborada, Rhapsody of Spadal, Bolero. I've talked about Boulez's late Ravel with the Berlin Philharmonic many times. It's the best thing he did in his late career. It is fabulously well played, beautifully recorded, scrumptious and lovely and fabulous and all of those things. I mean, really. Uh, what's this one? Oh, look, the Czech Philharmonic with Serge Baudo and Antonio Pedrotti on Superfon. This is some hot stuff. We've got Bolero, which is a really good one. It's almost just about 17 minutes. Um, the Pavan and Alborada del Gracioso and the short, sweet version of Mother Goose and Daphnis and Chloe, sweet number one. Now, Pedrotti does the Pavan and tracks four through eight. Okay, that's the Mother Goose. Baudo does everything else. Baudo was a really good conductor of this music. And of course, I got this just to hear the Czech Philharmonic, which was really great to hear. So that's that's a keeper. Uh, and this is, oh, Andre Cliton with the Paris Conservatoire. Everything but Daphnis. So there you go. They originally, um, EMI issued these things in various configurations. And the two-disc set had all the orchestral works, basically, mostly, I mean, most of them, except for Daphnis and Chloe. So, I mean, I hung on to that just because it was there. And this is, oh, another Martinon. Can you ever have too many Martinons? Yes, here it is. Bolero, Scheherazade Overture, Rhapsody Espanol, Menuet Antique, Lavals. <sighs> One left. This is it. One left. The last of the Ravels. Oh my God, the excitement. And like I said, it's Manuel Rosenthal. This is the 
the complete three disc orchestral works. And I think we've covered Ravel now in some of these sets in every single possible configuration that they've ever been released, or at least most of them. And you can see that there seems to be no limit to the amount of reissue, regurgitation, recombination of Ravel, and he's perpetually popular. And it's kind of amazing. And I've got way too much of it, just way too much of it. But thank you for seeing me through to the end of this impossible series of Ravel videos. Keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Finally, we're on to something else. Take care.